it's a beautiful day out here today so right away after work i came out and i started piddling around with this car i got it running i got i think i got my high idle sorted out it's high idling at about 1500 rpm which i think is probably going to be good um so that's at least that's one thing i got handled i took it for a drive and my problem's actually worse I think I've finally maybe got it in my head what's wrong. When I floor it, I'm coming up way lean. I, I for some reason had it in my head that I was rich, but I really don't think that I am. Now what I started out doing is because I have one, I went from the 4.5 back to the 6.5 power valve. You see where that takes me, but chances are tomorrow when i get a chance to zip into my local speed shop i'll pick up probably an eight and a half and then maybe probably a ten and a half just to fool around and see what i can uh, see what kind of changes i can make and try and get this thing drivable i really hope that i don't have to screw with my main jets because like i say at cruise it's going to be really good as far as running nice and mileage wise and things like that if i can make up for that slightly leaner primary jet with power valve and secondary jet i'm really hoping that i'm going to be able to make this thing run sweet now i really appreciate everybody's comments i'm taking everything into account but i've got to experiment a little bit on my own just just for my own sake because that's what this is all about for me is for is learning now I purchased this quick fuel carb because it's got a bazillion different tuning features. I mean, it's got replaceable little jets in the power valve circuit restrictors. So I can even increase the volume of gas coming out of that power valve circuit. If I can find those little wee tiny jets to do that. So anyways, stick with me, bear with me. I still, I really appreciate any comments and any thoughts on what I'm doing, but uh, I'm going to go after this a little bit again tomorrow and we'll see where it, where it takes us. I would also like to say, I want to thank Tom Muse. His channel's great. Uh, he reached out to me in the comments and he told me he was actually going to put together a video specifically trying to help me out with this problem. So thanks a lot, Tom. I looked through, or I watched your video once. There's so much information. I got to watch, watch through it again. And I'm going to get back to you. I'm going to share some of my thoughts with you. There's a couple of things about my car that I think maybe might help you help me if, if you know all the information. So anyways, thank you very much, Tom. Everybody watching, if you get a chance, check out Tom's stuff. He seems to be a wealth of knowledge when it comes to... Pretty much everything automotive and he's also one of the fellows that's working towards the no name 500 so i'll tell you what i've done so far and the results that it's got me i took some video specifically of the vacuum gauge while driving but i need a different camera mount or something because most of the footage that i got is out of, of the dirty floor in my car my car is a 3,200 pound duster with a mild 318, A500 automatic, 410 gear, and a 2,800 or so stall converter. It's basically the factory high stall converter for that was available for the overdrive automatic with a lockup converter. So that's basically the car that these results are based on. Just for information, I'm about 2,000, 2,300 feet above sea level where I live. Started out with a fresh set of plugs. The old ones were a bit black just from starting it up and not going anywhere all winter. I increased the high idle setting on the carb and made the choke open a little bit quicker. Give it one pump and it starts straight up. Idles at about 1100 RPM. After a couple minutes it comes up to about 1500 RPM idle and it'll just stay there till it warms up. Once it's warm you just got to touch the throttle it comes back down to a nice 800 RPM idle. Once it warms up outside and I play with it a bit, 
I want to adjust the four corner idle just to smooth out the vacuum and get as high a vacuum reading at idle as I can. Right now it's about eight and a half, nine inches of vacuum in gear, but it's just not as smooth as I'd like it to be. So hopefully I'll be able to make some improvements there. After I got the cold start figured out, my first change was the power valve. I had a six and a half power valve that came with the carb from new. So I installed that. I did the bad thing and I made two changes at once. I went away from the one to one secondary opening and went to full progressive. The quick fuel carb has three options, one to one, mild progressive and max progressive. I went right to the most progressive option. I'll likely do a test with the mild progressive linkage at some point, but that's just what I did for now. Took it up for a test drive and immediately noticed significant improvement in part throttle acceleration as the power valve was coming in much sooner. I didn't realize at all how much difference going from a four and a half to a six and a half power valve would make. It's significant. I'm still going to try an eight and a half power valve just so I know. I was very happy driving it around a part throttle. Hit the highway and rolled into it and accelerated up to 60 miles an hour nicely. I stopped, turned around, then flat footed it. It popped and stalled. It's way too lean still. I went home, put it away so I could work on the truck and think about things. Obviously still way too lean on the secondaries. Then it dang snowed again. When I got time to look at it Monday after work, I saw the secondary squirters were super weak and only spraying about a quarter of what the fronts were spraying, both at 31s. I checked the arm setting and it was just about perfectly set. Popped the carb off and removed the secondary bowl. The new crappy gasket I installed was mostly covering the squirter hole between the bowl and the metering plate. I sprayed through the passage in the metering plate to ensure there was no crap stuck in there. Now I got good strong accelerator pump shot. I decided since I was in there I should change the secondary jet and restore the six jet spread from the primary to secondary. It's actually seven jet spread because that's all I had. The six jet spread is just what it was from factory. Factory it was 72s and 80s so now it's 65s and 72s. I do not have a secondary power valve only secondary jets. That's why there's a spread. Thanks to John from Tall John's Fun Shop for the video he did on secondary jet sizing. I've not gone as far as measuring my power valve channel restrictors, so I cannot yet calculate the jets using your method, but I'm going to. I thought I would be able to get the info on the orifice size in my carb from an online source, but I can't find it anywhere. I may have to call a tech line or something to get that information, I guess. So here I am, waiting for better weather. The ground's white again. And not supposed to get above freezing for a few days yet. I'm not sure when I'll be able to get back at this. But as soon as the roads are dry, I'll get back on it. I pretty much sold myself on getting an AFR gauge. I'm just not sure when that's going to happen. Hopefully sooner than later. So I wish I had a bit more of an update than I do. But uh, the weather's just not cooperating. Unfortunately. I think I've got my primaries sorted out where I'm going to be happy with it. I'm still going to try that eight and a half power valve just for curiosity's sake. If I can make it better, I can make it better. It'll be great. Anyway, I got to figure out those secondaries. Lots of people have been helpful in helping me with getting there. It's just good old mother nature has kind of been in the way. So here we go. That's the update for now. If uh, anybody's got any other suggestions, any other comments, I'd love to hear them. I really appreciate all the help that I've been gotten so far. And hopefully we can create some kind of a history of all this stuff that I'm going through and other people can learn from it too. Thanks for watching.